four dollars. Keep the change. Thank you. Where do I run a boat? Uh, right down there. Thanks. girls around here. No fishing, but I would like to rent one of your boats to go out to one of the Channel Islands. Well, name it and it's yours. Which one? Saber Island. Saber Island is not on my chart. Wait a minute. What do you mean it's not on your chart? Why, I couldn't even find the map. And besides, I've lost all interest in the charter business. and ready to go. For how long? Well, I can't say. I'll have to rent it by the day. Got a driver's license or something? Yes, yeah, sure. That's okay. There's a hundred buck deposit. That cover it? Think you can handle her? Yes, yeah, sure. I can handle her. Which way is it to Saber Island? Farthest one to seaward. Saber Island? Hey, wait! Come here! You can't go there! Wait a minute! got a visitor. Strange boats tied up here in more than a year. There's one too many. You better see who our guest is. Pardon me, but are there any visitors' accommodations around here? Accommodation? Ask inside. Thanks. Excuse me. I'm sorry, sir. Thanks. Let's eat, man. I'd like to rent a room, please. Is this a place where I come to rent a room? Pardon me. A little service. Can I help I you, friend? Are you in charge here? I'm just a bystander. Who's in charge of the store? The military academy owns the island, all of it. Joe Nibley here runs the store. 
He may run it, but he hasn't given me the time of day. Perhaps he just doesn't understand you. This gentleman would like some service. I'd like to run a room, please. You affiliated with the academy? That's right. You one of the instructors? That's right. Well, I've had quite a long trip. If you've got some time off now, I've got a bottle in the bag. We could have a drink together. I don't drink. Are you going to be with us long, Mr... Not very. Where's my room? They're out back, Mr... I'll sign the register now. What number of room have I got? Did you have a reservation, Mr. Conway? I know. Why? Nibley never rents his rooms without prior reservations. Why don't you let Mr. Nibley speak for himself? He can't. He's deaf and dumb. I tried to phone from the mainland for reservations. We're on an isolated island. We don't have a telephone. Well, seeing how you're a bystander, I'll make my reservation now. Three lousy hamburgers. You don't have to call them lousy, do you? You have another kind? Want a Coke? Yeah. We got a visitor, all right. His name is Conway. Conway? This one's name is Stephen, not Stevie. After all this time? I'm certain of it. Get that cable? Yes, sir. Go find Major Kelly. Tell him a Mr. Stephen Conway will be in his office in a few moments. Who? That's an order cable on the double. Yes, sir. Now, you gentlemen had better go have a talk with your pal, Cadet Hastings. Know something, bud? It's time for Mr. Marlowe here is almost a great strategist. As you were, Barnes, sir. Guess we'll have to pass up those lousy hamburgers, Harry. Take them out of this. You know I ain't got no change for a hundred bucks. All right, let's go. My credit just have to be good. Come on, Billy. Those dirty little punks. All the money in the world and me with nothing. It's enough to make a man a communist. You'd make a great communist, Harry. Give me a beer. Come in. Oh, hello. Cheese sandwich? I'll have a burger with everything on it, please. Uh, huh, I forgot I, uh, I'm all out of burgers. All right, then I'll have a Frank. Sorry, I guess I must be out of Franks, too. Well, you, you do have coffee here, don't you? Nothing like a self-service restaurant. Sure. Fast service. Would you mind telling me, uh, who's in charge of the school here? Major Kelly, USMC, retired. Is he a nice fellow? I mean, do boys like him? These brats, they wouldn't like... Well, uh... Major, he's responsible for discipline, you know. Kids don't like anybody who makes them toe the mark, or even their old man. But, uh, the Major, he's a great guy, and he runs a great school. Looks like there's something in that coffee. Those donuts are pretty stale. 
What do I owe you? Oh, it's all right. It's okay. You're a big talker, Harry. A big talker. You want me to be like Joe Nibley? It'd be safer that way. It's not my problem. It's everybody's problem, Harry. Everybody who has to make a living on this island. You shouldn't have done it, Joe. It's not smart to take in strangers. Not without talking to me first. Your wireless set getting to the mainland okay? Send this message. To Western Union. Tell them to forward it and charge it to my account. I'll read it to you. Watch me. Ben Hudson, Flatiron Building, New York City. Get me fast rundown on Stephen Conway, Schenectady. And wire immediately to Redfern Kelly, Commandant, Saber Island Military Academy. Got it? Send it. Ben Hudson, sir. Private detective. Came out here fishing last year. Fishing for Marlin? Fishing for information. <laughs> but if like, hook. Hut, two, three, four. Hut, two, three, four. You live. noise? I sure did. This rope slipped. It sure did. Fellow has to watch himself around here. Why? Did it frighten you, sir? No, I enjoyed it. Where's the commandant's office? Down that path, sir. Thanks. My, my. That is dangerous. Sure is. How did that boat fall? An accident, sir. Did you talk to Cadet Hastings? No, sir. Couldn't find him, sir. You'd better look harder. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. On the double. On the double? Arch? Charlie boy, you seen Hastings? No, the only one I saw was the Major. Phillips, you seen Hastings? No, but I saw something a whole lot better. Hey, what you got? Uh, my dear Major sent me a hundred bucks from Rome for my birthday. Say, what do you say we get off the island Sunday and uh, find us a little action, huh? Now, how y'all gonna get off this island, man? Swim? No, no. Gentlemen, gather around. We'll steal the school boat. I just happen to know how to throw a wire across the ignition switch. I, uh, borrowed a few cars back home that way. Don't be a southern fried jerk, man. But that deal stopped working around here months ago. Major carries a distributor head in his past pocket. The heck he does. The heck he don't. Dingbat, you seen Hastings? You looked in his tree? His tree? Yeah, he's got a big pine tree behind the door. One of those four behind the bushes. Climbs it all the time, sometimes stays up there for hours. Boy, you've got a lot of weird characters in this pad. That's one I never heard. Well, let's go on trio, creepy boy. Yeah.
My name is Conway. Is Major Kelly in, please? Uh, not at the moment. When do you expect him back? He didn't say. Uh, I'm Stephen Conway, Jr.'s father. How do you do, Mr. Conway? How do you do? I wondered if you'd mind answering a few questions for me. To be frank with you, Mr. Conway, I would mind. You see, we had instructions from your son's mother before she died that you were not to be allowed on the island. And I'm not sure that's changed simply because your son's... your son's dead. Especially since it took you four months to get here. Four months ago, I was on a construction job in Pakistan. It was just last week that I received word from his guardian. Would you mind waiting for the Major? Tell me, what is there about this Sabre Island? Why is it that the, uh, that the boatmen don't want to come out to it? This is the most expensive military school in the United States, Mr. Conway. Full of boys from divided homes. We have cases every year of parents who have been barred from custody by the courts trying to kidnap their own children. I could hardly kidnap my son now, could I? Well, this must be Mr. Conway. I was told you were here. I'm Major Kelly. How do you do, Major? Come in my office. Make yourself at home. Thank you. Sorry to have kept you waiting. I was busy with some of the boys. I'm sure you'll find it more comfortable in here. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Cigarette? No, thank you, Major. I don't smoke. Such an unfortunate accident. He was a fine young man, your son. It's good to hear that. Major Kelly, do you have a photograph of the boy around here? Don't you have one, Mr. Conway? I haven't got a recent one, I'm sorry to say. I'll get you one. Miss Evans, bring in the file on Cadet Stephen Conway, Jr. Don't expect us to tell you much, Mr. Conway. And why can't you tell me much, Major? We have instructions not to. Major Kelly, I'm going to be perfectly frank with you. You see, I married a very wealthy young lady. When she decided that she wanted a divorce, she threw the biggest legal firm in the country at me. I ended up with no custody, with no visitation rights. I ended up with absolutely nothing at all. Oh, uh, I almost had an accident on the way over to your office here. One of the boats on the hoist around the academy, it slipped and almost hit me on the head. Missed me by just a few inches. Slipped? The rope broke. Well, thank you for telling me. I'll look into it. Here's your picture, Mr. Conway. How did the accident happen? You don't know? No. He was killed by a fall. Would you like to see the doctor's report? No, no, no. I didn't come here for any post-mortem. You see, I never knew the boy when he was alive. I just want to talk to some of his friends, some of his teachers. He had many friends. He was a very popular boy. I'm glad to hear that. Maybe I could start off by talking with his roommate. That'd be Cadet Hastings. I'll arrange for you to meet him. Yes, Miss Evans? Would you step out a moment, please, Major? Would you excuse me a minute? Yes, sir. Anything urgent? Yes. Don't you think that was a little dangerous? I like it dangerous. Oh, well, I don't. Uh, don't bother. It's kiss proof. You think of everything, don't you? Red, don't let him see Hastings alone. Suppose you let me handle this, Jen. Well, I'd make him suspicious. I had him pinned in the corner till you came in. He was the lousy father reproaching himself for not having the decency to take care of his own son. That 
the way I planned it. Has it ever occurred to you, Jennifer, that from a military man's point of view, a woman can be too smart? Nevertheless, don't let him see Hastings alone. Oh, excuse me, Major. I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Well, I was just coming back in. I think that before we do anything else, Major, I'd like to visit my son's grave as soon as possible. Well, the fact is, Stephen's not buried on this island. Oh. When I got the letter from the bank... We have no cemetery here. But he was laid to rest with full military honors on Bonefish Island. Mr. Garstens of the bank flew out and authorized the site. I see. Well, then perhaps you could uh, take me over to this other island in the school boat. <laughs> I'd be happy to, but unfortunately the school boat is out of commission. The engine's being overhauled. Oh. I guess I'll have to use my own boat after I make the arrangements. Arrangements? Uh, what arrangements? Why, well, the arrangements to have his body removed to the family plot in Schenectady. Removed? You can't do that. Major Kelly, I'm the sole surviving parent of Stephen Conway, Jr., and I'm going to do what I think is right. What I know is right. With or without your cooperation. Well, let's not quarrel. We're not Mr. quarreling. I just want it understood. You must appreciate the school's position. We'll have to have legal advice. And I'll get legal advice, too. Of course. Now, would you like to look for Cadet Hastings? All right. Miss Evans, will you get in touch with Mr. Marlowe and tell him where I've gone? Yes, sir. We can go out this way. Come on down, trippy boy. We're not going to hurt you, boy. We're your pals. Look, leave me alone, please. Just leave me alone. Listen, Crip. We've been talking it over. And we decided, well, we ought to be friends. Good friends, Crippy old boy. You'd rather have us for friends than enemies, wouldn't you? Come on down. We just want to talk to you for a few minutes. See you slide down that trunk, boy. Bet you can slide down that trunk real good. Come on. There we go. Hey, that's great. Why do you want to spend your time hiding in trees for, anyhow? Well, if my pal Crippy likes to climb trees, that's 100% okay with me. Yeah, but that, uh, that's kind of a crazy way to spend your time. What, uh, what do you do up there? Well, you can be alone and think in a tree. You can think for hours and not be bothered by anybody. Hey, that's a gas. And when you get tired of thinking, you can look at the bird's nest. Find a bird's nest up there? Yeah, uh, robins. I watch them build it. The mama bird laid three eggs. They're in it right now. Well, what do you know? Bird's eggs. You know what we've been saying about you, Crip? We've been saying a man like you ought to be one of our gang now. What do you say? You mean with you, Bud, and Charlie? Yeah, like when we go down to Harry's for a cheeseburger, you come along. Okay, I'll buy. No, no, no. You keep your money in your pocket, boy. We're gonna buy, right? Right. Okay. Crip, guess who we saw go by Harry's a few minutes ago? Steve Conway's father. Oh, you did? Uh, Stevie was my best friend. That's history, boy. We're your best friends now. Suppose Steve's old man starts to question you about the accident. You wouldn't want to say anything that might upset him, would you? Oh, gosh, no. We'll remind you how it happened. So you get it straight. Cadet Hastings. Mr. Conway, these are cadets Starkweather, Cable, Hastings, and Barnes. How do you do, How do you do, do, you do, you do sir? How do you do, gentlemen? I think some of us have met. Some of our fine Saber Island cadets. Hastings, where's your cap? Don't have it, sir. Come along with us for a few minutes. Mr. Conway would like to talk to you? Yes, sir. These are Cadet Hastings' new roommates, Mr. Conway. Cadet Phillips, Cadet Johnson. Johnson? How do you do, sir? Glad to know you. Phillips? Nice to know you, sir. Glad to know you, too. Major Kelly, this was Stephen's room? It was, indeed. Would you two mind clearing out for a while? We want to talk to uh, Cadet Hastings. Not at all, sir. I'll just get my sweater, sir.
Goodbye, Crippy boy. Sit down, Hastings. Mr. Conway, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Yes, sir. Relax, Crip. This isn't going to hurt. I suppose, Crip, that you'll be leaving on Christmas vacation soon, going back to visit your family, your folks, huh? No, sir. Cadet Hastings is an orphan, Mr. Conway. I'm sorry, Crip. Well, that, that's all right, sir. Is it uh, true what Stevie said about you? What did Stevie say about me, Crip? Did you uh, really build dams in India? Did Stevie talk much about me, Crip? Oh, yes, sir. Quite a lot. He, he kind of boasted about you. He did, huh? Boasted him? Yeah. Yes, sir. He did. <laughs> what, what kind of a boy was Stevie Cripp? Was he, was he a nice boy? I mean, did he play baseball and football? And oh, was he an athlete? Oh, yes, sir. He, he was a good athlete. Good. Were you around Cripp when the accident happened? Yes, sir. It's almost two. You're due at chemistry lab, Hastings, aren't you? Why, no, sir. I don't think so. Oh, I think you are. Run along now, Hastings. Yes, sir. Major Kelly, Cripp didn't have a chemistry class, did he? No, he didn't. Then why did you have him leave the room? He took your son's death very hard, Mr. Conway. He's just beginning to recover. I couldn't permit you to reopen the wound. I see. Well, thanks for your help, Major. I'll see you tonight at dinner. And until then, I'll just uh, look around the place if you have no objections. None at all. Pardon me, but could you tell me which direction Bonefish Island would be? Out there. Be on the point. Thank you. Can't you get Nibley's daughter off the island, Major? The cadets are tough enough to handle as it is. With her around, they're like a pack of toms on the back fence. But they're being trained for manhood, Hank. With his manhood, there's women. Looks like the man's having trouble starting his boat. Looks that way. Don't look so scared. Have a beer on me. He's coming. Don't let your voice tremble, Sergeant Marlowe. Well, it's a big deal. He's probably buying a fast pack of cigarettes. No, he's not. Out there, I want to borrow your boat. I'll give you a hundred dollars for the use of your boat. 
Just an hour. Let's have those beers, Harry. What's your name? Cadet Drummond Seely, sir. Left guide, Company A, Sabre Island Military Academy. And yours? Cadet Edmund Phillips, sir. We've met. If I ever... Sir, didn't you ever pitch a little woo when you were a kid, you sir? You call that pitching woo? Ed, maybe he doesn't dig woo. I suppose it was called courting in your time, sir. Go on, get out of here. Both of you, go on. Yes, sir. Very good, sir. You still here? Can I have that cup of coffee now? Cream? No, I'll just take it black. Tell me. What kind of a school is this? No, no, I mean, you can tell me now. There's nobody here. What kind of a school is it? You mean you don't know? What do you think it's off on an island like this for? It's a school for solid platinum rats. It's a rich kid's penitentiary. Penitentiary? This is where they come when they've been thrown out of every other school in the country. Hit and run drivers, car thieves, dopies. The kind you gotta get out of the state or nothing's gonna keep them out of jail. Do you know how much it costs to keep a kid in this institution? Fifteen grand a year. Did you, uh, did you ever know a boy that went here whose name was Stephen Conway? Yeah. He used to come in here for burgers now and then. Was he like the rest of the kids in the school? Well, you know, sometimes one of these dizzy rich dames, she wants her kid to go to the best military school there is. You know, the old man, he's busy or he's away or... She looks up all the military schools in the book. She finds out Sabre Island is the most expensive. So she figures, the most expensive, it's got to be the best. You know, uh, a decent kid could get in here by mistake. Funny, isn't it? Yeah. Well, that's very funny. I uh, leave an extra carbine clip in here, Harry? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. See ya, Harry. that guy? Vince. He's a drill instructor. Well, he ought to know better than to point guns at anybody. Well, I guess it wasn't loaded. The hell it ain't. Four, column lamp. Hoo! Hup, hup, three, four, your lamp, your lamp. 
Your left, right, left. There you are, Mr. Conway. Fine drill team, isn't it? We're proud of the caliber of our instruction. Saber Island believes in discipline. Saber Island believes in making the man. How long has the school been here, Major? It was founded in 1910. I took over from the original owner directly after the Korean War. Thanks. We fill a real need, Mr. Conway. Saber Island believes in isolation, in no distractions. We give the youngsters a chance to concentrate on their studies. Do you know that we have more faculty members in proportion to the size of our student body than any other military school in America? How did my son die, Major Kelly? What did he fall from? From the roof of the dormitory. Strictly against the rules, of course. But you know how kids are, always climbing around places they're not allowed. Who was the attending physician? Dr. Longstreet, our physician in residence. Oh, you have a permanent physician for 24 cadets? He also teaches biology. He's a very experienced man. Major Kelly, I want to see my son's grave as soon as possible. What about your boat? It won't work. Well, that's a shame, Mr. Conway. When will the school boat be ready for use, Major? It's all torn down. Engine parts scattered all over the machine shop. Well, would it be possible to row to the island? It would be, but it's much too dangerous. There are sharks in the channel. Major, you're a military man. Suppose this were D-Day. When do you think you could get me to the island? D plus one, D plus two, or D plus three? I couldn't even guess, Mr. Conway. Thanks. Don't forget dinner tonight, Mr. Conway. What's your name? Lorenda. Lorenda, are there any other boats around here? Just yours. This in working order? Distributor heads are missing. That's what's the matter with my boat. Hey, is there a, an outboard motor or some oars I could use with that skiff? Look at the guest tank.
Lorinda. You better get your stuff and get out of here. Where'd they get it? The dummy? Who got on the boat? Did you? Where did he get the motor? If you don't watch out, you're liable to be hit by a stray bullet. You'll never hear it. Must be the answer to my wire.
They shot your boat full of holes. You better go down and get the motor before it goes to the bottom. Major Kelly in. He is not. Who was responsible for picking the burial site for my son? His parents neglect, Mr. Conway. His parents neglect. I want you to understand why I thing understand that... you perfectly, Mr. Conway. You'd like to blame the school, Major Kelly, anybody for your own shortcomings. Major Kelly, did you pick the grave site for my son? No, Mr. Conway. It was his legal guardian, a representative from the bank. I'm also told that this is a school for rich incorrigibles. Is that also true? The boys at this school never had a chance, Mr. Conway. By the time they're old enough to come here, their parents are hiding behind lawyers and psychiatrists. Major Kelly does wonders with the cadets. But we never see a boy until everyone else has failed, especially his parents. Someone took a shot at me today, Major. Why? And why did somebody try and sink my boat? If bullets hit your boat, Mr. Conway, it's because the waterfront is our firing range. Oh. There, are, there are signs warning people off. Uh -huh. You have a cannon on the campus also, don't you? Yes, the sunset gun. Well, somebody fired that cannon with an active shell in it. And they fired it at me. They missed me about five inches. Are you sure you're not imagining things, no, Mr. Conway? I'm not imagining this. That cannon fires only blanks. I'm not imagining it, Major. If you don't believe me, go down by the pier and see the damage that it did. I will, personally. Page Hut! We thank thee, our Father, for these thy gifts, of which we are about to partake. Amen. Hurry! Wait a minute, you guys. I got a buddy here. Have a steak, creepy boy. Uh, thanks, Billy Jack. Oh, have a big... Here, have some asparagus. <laughs> Have a potato chip, you old boy. Oh, thanks. Here you go. You asked when the school boat would be ready for use, Mr. Conway. I'm happy to say that it can take you back to the mainland tomorrow. Well, Major Kelly, I'm not planning on returning to the mainland tomorrow. Well, if you're concerned about your charter boat, we can tow it. There's more about my son's life here on Sabre Island that I'd like to know. If you have any special questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Well, I'd like to speak with his teachers, his English teacher, for example. Mr. Marlowe was his English teacher. Oh, I thought Mr. Marlowe was in charge of physical education. And English. Most of our teachers carry two subjects. Hmm. What about his mathematics teacher? Oh, that's Mr. Purley. Mathematics and drill. Well, I still would like to talk with his roommate. You have, Mr. Conway. No, I mean alone, Major. I'm afraid I can't permit that. No, why not? Cadet Hastings is what we term a disturbed personality. Do I exaggerate, Doctor? Not at all, Major. Not at all. Very disturbed. As I told you before, he took Steve's death very hard. I wouldn't want the whole episode brought back to his attention again. Have another potato. Oh, no, Rick. I have... Eat it, boy. I'll make a man out of oh, no. you. <laughs> she thanks. Doctor, is that coffee good? Excellent, sir. Excellent. 
Major Kelly, was my son a disturbed personality also? Well, let's not put it so harshly. Let's just say he had problems. Problems? What kind of problems? I don't remember offhand. Well, I'm sure they'd show up on his scholastic record. Miss Evans, after dinner, maybe we could go over to the office and you could show me these records. I'm afraid we don't keep that kind of record, Mr. Conway. At this school, we can't afford to. Look, I'm getting tired of hearing conflicting stories about my son. I'm going to find out the truth for myself. All of the truth, good or bad. Whatever the truth is. Gentlemen. Doctor, would you mind leaving us? Of course, Major. Of course. Sergeant, I was wrong about Conway. Until tonight, I would have settled for scaring him off the island. Now he cannot leave. Cribby boy, don't turn in early tonight. Stranger on the island. Better stay in your room. I will, bud. Atta boy, Crip. Good night, Crip, yeah. old buddy. Yeah, good night, fellas. Good night. Charge. Charge, rat. Come in, Crip, and sit down. Over here by me. Crip? Why is it every time I've tried to ask Look, you I questions... Of... Well, how is it you know the answers before I ask you the questions? Look, Crip, I'm trying to find out something about my son. I'm his father. I have a right to know. You're a good kid. Stevie was a good kid, too, wasn't he, Crip? Wasn't Stevie a good boy? He was the only good kid on the whole island, sir. Not the only good kid, Crip. But I get scared. And Stevie didn't. Stevie wasn't afraid of anybody. How did he die, Crip? Huh? How did Stevie die? How did my son die? Uh, he, uh, fell off the dormitory roof. There were no witnesses. Uh, it was 10.30 Friday night. It was the northwest corner. Say that again. He fell off the northwest corner of the dormitory roof. There were no witnesses. It was 10.30 Friday night. Well, you have that memorized pretty good. <laughs> What's the matter with you? There's just you and me here, Crip. Nobody else. How did it happen? What's the matter with you, boy? Look. Like I said, I get scared. They told me what to say about the accident, but... But, but what? But what? Look, I don't know anything. Hello, Crip. Mr. Conway? Mind if we do a little studying, sir? You know how it is. We have to... Crack the books. All right, Crib. I'll be in room number one if you want to talk to me. Hey, what's with the furniture? Crippy boy. He didn't throw that chair at you, did he? No. Well, if anybody throws a chair at you, you just let me know. I want to help him. <laughs> All right, you two. You've done your job now. Shove off. Yes, sir. Very good, sir. Company halt. Who saw Mr. Conway come out of here, boy? We warned you not to talk to the man. What'd you tell him? I didn't tell him anything about it. Honest, I didn't tell him a thing. Look at this. Bird's eggs. Well, where'd you get them? Out of your tree. Ah. Do you know what they're good for? You want them? Here.
serve after 9 o'clock. I don't want anything to eat. It's a cup of coffee. Don't serve. It's a rule. 100 bucks, what's that for? I may want a lot of coffee, Harry. I'd like to help you, friend. I've got no financial ambitions. How did my son die, Harry? What happened? I don't know a thing about it. Now, look, I don't know if you're in this thing or not. But you know that when I get back to the mainland, I'm going to spend a lot of money to hire people to find out what's been going on on this island. So why don't you get smart and keep a little of this lettuce for yourself? Might help you remember. I told you, I got no ambitions. You'll learn to mind your own business on this island. You'll live a lot longer. Now, keep your money. I'm not playing on your team. Ah, uh, you keep it. Maybe you won't be playing on the other team either. No obligations? Just a cup of coffee. Evening, Miss Evans. Good evening, Harry. She gets headaches. Vodka's good for it. Sevens, can I buy you another drink? Anybody can buy me a drink tonight. Harry, another Russian headache powder for Miss Evans. Unless you can think of something better to do on this island paradise. Something better. Like what? Like getting clean off the island. Together. Don't look so startled, Mr. Conway. You advertise. I had you pegged for the Major's girl. Maybe I'd like to be. Maybe it doesn't get me anywhere. Coffee? No, 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 thank you. You know, you're very attractive, Miss Evans. Any other week in my life, I'd be very flattered. Don't be. You see, it's my luck to be the only woman on a tropical island with five Marines. But every one of them is too afraid of his commanding officer to make a pass. And the commanding officer, what is he afraid of? A plain gold wedding band. No bigger than that. He's the... Be who wants to violate the flower. Never, never get stuck in the petals. Harry? What keeps you here, Miss Evans? Ever hear of teacher salaries? This is the one place that I know of where they're high. Only at nine o'clock at night, it gets so monotonous around here, I'm ready to scream. Yes, it is a little like a jail, isn't it? The kids, they've earned their right to be here. All I did was answer an ad in the Sunday paper. Advanced teacher certificate, top salary. Only now I'm not so sure it's worth it. Won't you drink with me, Mr. Conway? Yes, sure. Sure, I'll drink with you. Your success. Coffee? Well, after all, it's just a thought, isn't it? Harry, bring Mr. Conway a vodka on the rocks. I don't care for any vodka. Good. I'm only allowed uh, three of these an evening, but if I drink from your glass, it won't count. <laughs> <laughs> You're only allowed three vodkas? Mm-hmm. By whom? Certain people who have lots of influence with Harry. 
Haven't they, Harry? Haven't what? Certain people, lots of influence with you. Well, just leave me out of this, huh? Harry, I hear you're not very liberal with your uh, vodka in this establishment. Well, I allow three drinks to a customer. Bring me uh, two more, will you, please? Not such a bad fellow. Not such a bad fellow at all. Did you ever hear the psalm of life? No, I don't think so. As the dead pass, bury its dead. As was said. I wish I could. Is this the way you find out the truth about your son, Mr. Conway? One woman on an island with half a dozen men and 24 growing boys. It's dangerous to suggest intimacy in any way. In any way, Mr. Conway. bad for school morale to let any wrong impressions of Miss Evans go uncorrected. It's also very bad for her reputation, too. Guess you're right. It's late, Miss Evans. I was just leaving. I hope you'll accept my humblest apology. Four beers, Harry. Have one on me, Mr. Conway. Major Kelly, I've decided to take you up on your offer about the boat. Maybe you could uh, take me across the channel tomorrow. Well, tomorrow's Sunday. I have to conduct the services. Well, then perhaps one of your men could take me. Well, their presence is necessary at Sunday services, too. i tell you what I will do, Mr. Conway. I'll take you there tonight. I have claustrophobia about riding in a boat at night. I have a fear of, of falling overboard. Claustrophobia is the fear of being closed in. The fear of falling is acrophobia. Well, that's right. You teach English, too, don't you? Oh, well, Major, perhaps you could take me after services. I'm afraid this is purely an academic discussion, Mr. Conway. I've just remembered the boat is out of order again. You know how to handle a rifle, Mr. Conway. How would you like to join us in a little target practice? No, thanks. I might end up the target again. That's an insult. 
I apologize. That's an insulting apology. Don't grab that gun. Don't grab it. Why not, Mr. Conway? Because I have a witness. Well, he's not a willing witness, but nevertheless, he's a witness. Aren't you, Harry? You wouldn't like to be involved in a murder, would you, Harry? I don't want to be involved in nothing. See, Major, you can't kill me. Because you'd have to kill Harry here, then you'd have to kill these two guys, too. Are you trying to pick a fight, Mr. Conway? <laughs> these men are ex-Marines. If you attack them, they'll defend themselves. <laughs> if I attack them, I mean, that's very clever. Harry, did you hear what he said? He said that just to put it, this idea, into your mind. You see the gun he laid down here? Well, I'll give you anything you want that there's no bullets in it. And if you don't believe me, Harry, come down and examine the gun. Stay where you are, Harry. You see, Harry, I'm supposed to grab the gun here. And then the two big, brave Marines. They can shoot me in self-defense with their guns. Their guns happen to be loaded. Aren't they, Major? Vince, empty your rifle. You too, Sergeant. Now lock the door. All the rifles are empty now, Mr. Conway. Which one of you are going to do the job? Or are you all three going to jump me at the same time? I'm not going to need any help, Mr. Conway. You heard him, Harry. First he insults us, and then he challenges us to a fight, right? Yeah, yeah, it seems so. I got news for you. There were a lot of guys in the Marines. In my outfit, he wouldn't have lasted a week. Sergeant? All right, little man. You had your fun. through that, huh, Major? I guess you did. Didn't he, Harry? Huh? You better say yes, Harry. Well, Major, I wouldn't trust Harry's yeses too much if I were you. Or any of these guys are Miss Evans. They can't go on saying yes all the time. Someday, somebody's gonna say no. I guess there must be plenty of these around a military academy. Come in, Red.
What are you doing in my office? Smelling your pipe tobacco. Sitting in a chair you sit in. Exciting, isn't it? Listen. I want you to do something else for me. Big something or a little something. What's the difference? Well, for a little favor, I charge a small fee, but for a big one... Okay. You've collected your fee. And that was only the down payment. If they move the kid's body from Bonefish Island, they'll open up the box. Then people will be going to jail, and Sabre Island stops being a gold mine. That's not my problem, Red. You're my problem. And I can't chase you forever. Sooner or later, I have to catch up with you. If they open up that box, they'll catch all of us. Let's talk about you and me first. And I'll do anything you want to do. Hmm? What happened? Come on, let me get you cleaned up. Crip, you gotta stop all this fooling around now. You gotta tell me who did this. Here, hold up. I know this is gonna hurt a little bit. <laughs> I know, hang on. They really banged you up. Crip, who did this to you? Here, come on. Crip, listen to me. Look, I owed... Crip, listen to me, please. Look, I owed Stevie a debt. All right. What I owed him maybe was just being his father. I can't pay that debt now. But I could pay it to you if you'd let me. Let me help you. You can't help me. I can, I can't. They wouldn't let you. Who did this thing to you? Same three. What do you mean, what same three? The ones who killed Stevie. The ones that killed Stevie? Stockwell, Barnes, and Cable. Stockwell, Barnes, and Cable. It was Hell Week. They were initiating Stevie with a paddle. Then, then Stevie didn't fall off a roof? No. He bent down so they could paddle him. Only stock with him missed. He hit him right on the neck. Only he wasn't using a paddle, he was using a baseball bat. God. They told me it was an accident. Where was the faculty? Mr. Marlowe was there. He was supervising the initiation. Where was Major Kelly? He's the one that told me it was an accident. He said a Marine has to keep a stiff upper lip. Even if one of his buddies gets killed. And you didn't tell... You didn't tell anybody about this, Crip. Who am I gonna tell? This old lawyer, he's 70 years old, he's my guardian. I hardly know him. Mr. Conway, I don't have anybody.
You do now, son. What's happening? What's going on in there? Crip's in there with him. They're getting up. They're coming out. I'll clobber him. You do that, boy. Get him good. Want some of it? Come and get it. You want it? I'll give it to you. Come and get it. You want it too? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm all right. On Okinawa, I ran into tougher guys than this. and make it off the island. Will you hide Crip for me until I get back? Okay, come here. Right. Now, don't show your face outside till I get back and you hear my voice, you understand that? Yes, sir. Good. Don't tell anyone he's here because they'll try to kill him. yourself at home. I'm sorry I haven't got any vodka, but you'll find the aspirins in my shaving kit. This will do, for now. I'm very honored, Miss Evans, but uh, why? Maybe I like you. Maybe. I suspect you'll like Major Kelly better. Here's the United States Marines. Probably with the Marines, they'll... I don't do anything for a girl except marry her. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get off this island. And I want to take you with me. You know, we just met today, Miss Evans. And I have a feeling you're not a charitable institution. You want it straight? Yeah, I'd like it straight. Major Kelly and I broke up tonight. So? So are you ready to shake this place? Yeah. Yeah, I'm ready to shake this place. Where's your bag? <laughs> I guess you don't know the Major. I didn't think it would be healthy to stop for it. Why'd you stop for me? I'm going to need some clothes when I get back to the mainland and some money while I wait for a lawyer to collect my paycheck. All right, suppose I buy that. Just how do you plan on getting off this island? Oh, I came equipped. Equipped? Mm-hmm. Key to the padlock on the boat uh -huh. and key to the lock on the pier. There's a pair of oars in it and an outboard motor. There's also some big holes in it. The boat that nearly fell on your head went back into the water this evening. I saw to it. How many will the boat hold? Will it hold three people? Two. You and... me. Cheers! Close up for the night, Major. You close up when I tell you to. Get me a beer. He's a tough little man, that Conway. Who are you talking about? I don't know anyone by that name. Neither do you. No, sir. You've been suffering from delusions lately, Harry. Stop imagining things or you'll be put away. Yes, sir. Now get me that beer. 
Get the oars. Got it? Yes. Why was Major Kelly trying to cover up my son's murder? 24 students at $15,000 a year. Try that on your slide rule. Get down on the bottom of the boat, be quiet, and get out of sight. Go on. Get out of the bottom. Don't you know that? You take your chances, I'll take mine. Wait a minute. This way, Red. This way, Red.
Thanks. You'll like it where I live, Crip. At least I hope you will. Do you think they'll let me? We'll make them let you. I'm going to get in touch with your lawyer in Boston. I want to adopt you, Crip. And then we'll both have a family again. <laughs> 